Welcome, heretics, to the pit. Uh, it is uh, April the 8th, and I'm doing my daily gaming, uh, daily vlog, blog, locks, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, what did I do yesterday? Well, I've been painting my Warhammer dudes, and uh, I went to the hobby store because I was, I'm, I don't know what to do for my bases for my Warhammer guys and uh, so uh, I was at the hobby store because I was looking for a Settlers of Catan uh, plastic well we have a plastic uh, frame for Settlers of Catan but we we're looking for an expansion one just just a middle piece to make it for the five six player expansion but that's beside the point I was there and I found a crystal growing kit by uh, Giant and uh, this thing is like, I remember these when I was a kid, and, but mine was like with salt. This one's like all chemicals. It's uh, aluminum, nitro, something. Uh, and it's written here somewhere. Well, I don't know. Uh, so I had this idea of encasing my Contemptor Dreadnought in crystal, and it would be the coolest base or a disaster that melts the plastic and a waste of seventy dollars because contemptors well mine's from calf but still you don't want to you don't want to destroy models because they're expensive so anyway uh i prepped the uh, contemptor i glued just the legs because uh i don't want to like i don't want to glue the arms on and i didn't want to uh, glue the chest plate on uh, so I glued just the legs and the shoulder vents and uh, that was the first mistake uh, because uh, anyway to grow the crystal it's basically this solution you boil some water you put the 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 sol the sol solute in uh, you let it uh, rest and then you put in this uh, gypsum little stone, this porous stone, at the bottom of uh, the uh, solute. And, uh, well, I guess it's a solution, but... Uh, um, so I had the contemptor glued to the gypsum plate, and it was, it was a good gluing. Like, I got a good secure fit. It, it wasn't just, like... Uh, it wasn't the glue's fault, I'll just say that. So I put the, uh, I carefully lower the gypsum slash contemptor into the, uh, the little container of solution. And something weird happened is the, uh, gypsum kept, uh, you know, flipping, flopping, which really shouldn't have been happening because, uh, um... Oops, I wasn't full screen. It shouldn't have been happening because, uh, you know, it's pretty heavy. So, well, I mean, it's not like heavy, heavy, but it's not nothing. So, uh, um, uh, what, uh, I, uh, carefully lower the contemptor into the water and it just breaks off. And I'm like, what? So I pull the contemptor out of the water, and it has these two big chunks of gypsum attached to the bottom of its feet that I had to shave off with my hobby knife. So yeah, um, the buoyancy of a contemptor dreadnought with the shoulder plates on is greater than the shearing tolerance of gypsum. So. I mean, I can still grow the crystal, I just can't grow it around the Contemptor. If I... and this crystal kit was 15 bucks. It's not something that I would just willy-nilly. Like, this was gonna be a really cool thing. So, if you ever decide to do your own crystal project, make sure you weight down the your model, because it, it'll float and it'll tear up the gypsum and then you'll feel bad and stupid uh so that aside um <laughs> i 
I still have the manual because I'm still going to grow the crystals. I have, I borrowed a GoPro. I'm going to do a time lapse of the actual crystal growing process, which takes about a month. Uh, speaking of, I have no idea how the time lapse is going to actually work effectively because the GoPro has not so grump uh, battery life. And, uh, but anyway, I got the manual. Shit. I hate these turrets. And I got the manual, and like I said, it's from the, it's Giant Brand Crystal Garden Magical Crystal. Like, that's the actual brand. Giant Brand Crystal Garden Magical Crystal. Uh, the instructions are some of the weirdest, like, I've heard of, like, weird foreign instructions not making any sense, but, like, I'm in Canada, and this is, I think, an American company, and the only instructions provided are English and French, so it's clearly, you know, <coughs> it's clearly uh, localized, in quotes. Um, I'll just uh, use my skill points here real quick. Um, but uh, it is, this is like the weirdest manual I've ever seen. Like, okay, like, it uses, it's not a dangerous chemical, but if you, you, you should not ingest it, and you should not get it in your eyes, because you'll form crystals in your guts, and that'll cause a bunch of problems, and, uh, so you should have, uh, it, oh, yeah, it's like, in case of accidental ingestion, you should readily have available the phone number for your nearest physician control center. Your position control center, yes. Because uh, that's exactly who you should phone in case of the accidental ingestion of magic crystals. But uh, that's not only the weirdest, is the all the instructions are weird. Um, for example, I'm going to read... I'm just going to pause the game here and read uh, the complete steps. Um, like, step one. Find a room or location where the temperature remains relatively constant and where the crystals may grow without disturbed. That's fair enough. That's just, you know, a simple weirdness. Uh, but in the details, it's like, please try to stay away from windows, radiators, or air conditions, ventilation places. Yeah, my guy was like, um, uh, be precise of the measure of boiling water. Too much water or not enough water will cause the crystal growing fail. Uh, do not use a luminous container to boil water. Take hot water directly from water fountain is acceptable. Uh, stir with the stick provided in the kit until all the powder completely dissolved. Stirring can be clockwise or counterclockwise when adopted. Stirring speed sooner the better. Um, where was the really good one? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a lot in here, and I don't want to, like, be reading the entire manual looking for the funny ones, but, uh, the, uh, the little kicker, like, the last, the last piece of, the last line of text of this manual is, at normal pressures, the most commonly used crystallization way is to transform liquid into crystal. Yeah. I right, like, can't argue with that. Is uh, it's just really weird. So anyway, uh, oh great, I have to punch down this door. So uh, I had to rinse out the contemptor, and uh, like if I left the shoulder plates off, it would have flooded with the crystal solution, and. Uh, uh, and by shoulder plates, I mean the things with the uh, the concave surface that you attach the arms to that have, like, the uh, exhaust vents on them. Um, if I left those off, the contemptor would have flooded with the crystal solution and wouldn't have floated off. Um, so I rinsed him out, uh, gave it a good dry. I woke up this morning to check it, and... Uh, 
along the glue lines were very, very small crystals. And I was like, "Oh, this could have probably worked if I actually tried or cared to try properly. So I felt even badder. Um, so it's definitely worth trying. But yeah, make sure it's secure to the base. And the other thing is the gypsum plates that it comes on actually is the same size as... Uh, it, it's only slightly larger, but I've seen people... It's no larger than what I've seen people do uh, terrain, terrain bases. It's like about that size. It's only slightly larger than the contemptor base. Um... So, uh, it would have made for a really good base. Um, so I'll just have to imagine it working. But uh, once the crystal is done, maybe I can do something with it. Okay, so what else did I do? Uh, I finished my special weapons veteran and my uh, veteran sergeant. Uh, so my very first veteran tactical squad is done. Uh, I just need to think of something to do with the bases. I got a lot of supplies, I just don't know what I want. Uh, I'm probably not gonna go lava on these guys, because Kalf is, uh, trail at Kalf is all interiors and, uh, uh, installations and stuff, and... That's kind of like, like, Space Marines are shock troopers. They, like, rush in and destroy. So, they're not going to be standing around on a volcano for no reason. Uh, so I like, I like the, I like the urban, uh, I like the urban for, uh, terrain. <laughs> um, so... The first, my first squad is done. Uh, salamanders. Uh, I have them green and gold. Uh, and, uh, I don't have any insignia on them yet. Because I'm waiting to either get a, get some, uh, decal paper that I can print to. Or, uh, concentrate. Uh, either some decal paper I can uh, print to, or just plain ordinary uh, thin paper I can print to, so that I can print transfers for their uh, pauldrons. And if I can't get that to done, can't get that to done. If I can't get that done, to uh, uh, make a stencil. Uh, like I know what I want on their shoulders. I want the classic 30k salamanders logo, which is the uh, white salamander in the gold ring and that's what i'm gonna have on all my guys uh so so that's all that needs to be done the sergeant needs just a little more detail because uh when i glued it i forgot to dry brush it and uh, i like to dry brush with the necron compound because uh it gets really good look because necron compound and the citadel dry brush they're kind of shitty but uh it's shitty in a good way. Uh, it makes very... Like, normally you don't want streaks. But this thing streaks like shit. So, uh... uh it makes for more realistic... Uh... Damage. Uh... Because it looks like... Actual scratched metal. Because of how streaky it is. So it's like... It's really good for dry brushing the guns. And Necron Compound as a color is I actually really like it. I like the soft metal. And if you uh, if you paper it down a great deal uh, so that you just have basically a rouge or makeup or whatever of uh, Necron compound left on the brush and you just brush it over something, it doesn't change the color any, but it makes it metallic-y shiny, which is actually kind of, kind of nice. Uh, but, you know, I'm not an expert. Like, I only just started the Warhammers, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret, because I'm pretty sure my cousin's not going to watch this video, but uh, 
Um, I kind of actually got into the Warhammer because I have a little personality quirk of one-upmanship. And my cousin bought Betrayal at Calth, and I saw it, and I was like, I gotta be better than this. And, uh, I went and had to buy it for myself, and then, uh, a Fire Raptor, a Spartan, Cassie and Draco, Fire Drake's Power Clasts. I was like, uh, that's like my biggest personality flaw is one-upmanship. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, like that's one of the reasons I'm on uh, A stats is for the achievement points and why I play uh, games like this, Sword of the Stars of the Pit, and for the achievement points is because of one-upmanship. But uh, a few other people found out my secret to beating Tales of Magial, uh, and I don't mean... Yeah, it was saves coming, but, uh... Eh, who cares about saves coming? It's... Um... So there's... I exclusively had almost all of the Madness roguelike achievements for the longest time. And now it's shared with three other dudes. And, uh, So instead of getting 250 points for each of those rare achievements, they're now only worth 66 points. But still, because Tales of Magial has a massive player base, uh, even those achievements are worth a lot. Like, the average achievement for any old random game is, like, one point. Like, yeah, if I were to turn on, like, ha uh, Halo, Half-Life 2, and do some achievement, like, uh, across the desert without uh, alerting the Antlions, uh, that'd only be probably, like, two or three points. Uh, despite everybody ever having Half-Life 2, just because uh, everybody has it. But, uh, yeah. So, okay. Um, that's enough of my... Uh, that's basically my entire personal life in the last two days. Uh, so I guess it's time to talk about the pit, now that I'm almost past my uh, kamikaze start scum. Uh, because that's what I like to do. I like to start scum until the fifth floor. Uh, because you need to, you need to skill up your, uh, I was hoping to find more cookers and labs to skill up, uh, biotech and, uh, electronics, computing mechanics. Uh, and I was hoping for a few more locked doors to get some more, uh, lockpicking skill ups, but, uh, they didn't happen, but that's okay. Um. I didn't get anything stellar, and I didn't identify any particularly good traps. So this is just going to be a plain ordinary, ordinary run with nothing special about it. Um, but as such, it also means I'm going to be uh, depositing my everything into the safe room because like I didn't get anything special so there's no reason to keep this character but there's also no reason to keep stuff so I'll deposit the rifle rounds because I don't have a rifle uh, I'll keep the pistol rounds uh, actually I should be stockpiling food I never actually thought of that uh, I'll I could but eh, I really don't know if I should uh, I don't need ballistic repair kit, so I guess I'll just go exploring because I don't need any of this stuff, but uh, So yeah Yeah, I'm going you get five times your investment back so like just deposit when you can afford it Or when you have zero confidence in your character uh, It's uh, also by the difficulty so uh, you can't uh, farm up on easy mode and uh, withdraw on seriously. But uh, what you can do... Oh, these guys are the worst. What you can do is you can play as somebody who has a high experience mod, such as the Engineer, and get more experience per enemy. And then withdraw as somebody with a low experience mod, such as the mercenary, and that 
is a huge boon for them. Because one of the big problems with the mercenaries is they don't get hardly any experience. I mean, the difference between... <coughs> I think the engineer gets something like eight or nine times the experience of the mercenary. I don't have numbers off the top of my head here. Um, I'm a little wounded. I'll just take a nap. Um, so yeah, uh, and the mercenary is like a really good character because he has a rather stellar melee weapon, the Tarka Warhammer, which, uh, is capable of inflicting knockback. So enemies that were some of the hardest enemies for, uh, the scions and light characters to handle are, uh, grapplers and werewolves and stuff. Well, they're not werewolves, they're like Tarka, Tarka, Barka, Tarka Barkas. Um, uh, they'll, they, they have uh, a movement of two, so you can't outrun them, but they also can't catch up to you. Um, but if you uh, knock them back, they have to waste one of their moves to catch up to you. Now, uh, if they have a movement of one, such as... Uh, uh, diseased bear, I believe. Uh, they'll never be able to touch you. But they are heavy, so you might not always knock them back. But uh, one of the tricks is, if you uh, stand diagonally from them, like I'm doing to this Tarka dude, um, when you knock them back, they get knocked back diagonally, and it forces them to make two moves to catch up to you, which uh, means they'll never touch you. And uh, that makes some of the hardest enemies for light armor characters some of the easiest enemies for the Tarka. And, uh, or the mercenary. Uh, the problem with the mercenary is he is a very hungry dude. Um, I can feel the power. He has, he does have higher max food, but he needs way, way more food than uh, other classes. The only other class that compares is probably the Striker, and even then only because the Striker has only a move of one. Like, the Striker is also a hungry character, but the combination of that with having only one move means you're going to be burning a lot of food. Uh, the Seeker is also technically hungry, but only because the Seeker burns a lot of uh, psionics, and you pay a very you pay a food to uh, perform uh, psionics. So, but other than that, the mercenary has the highest regular consumption. Uh, so much so that uh, foods that, uh, well actually he doesn't have the highest regular consumption. I believe that's that's the Hiver Warrior. But the mercenary is up there. Um, so foods that, uh, like, High efficiency food is good for everybody, but uh, for those high consumption characters, it's uh, foods that uh, block uh, food consumption that help the most, and that's stuff like uh, ice gems. So you can store ice gems for them. Uh, foraging. Uh, I don't. I'm just going to get manipulation, and that's it. Um. Yeah, that should do. Um, where am I? <coughs> so my first uh, Warhammer squads are done. I'm mostly happy with them. There's some mistakes. And now you're dead. And now you're dead. Uh, but uh, they're mostly technical mistakes, like places where some paint splattered. Uh, I tried to touch them up, but whenever I did a touch up, the color wouldn't exactly match, so I would use a thinner paint, and then I would get this weird awkward blend of the touch up and the color underneath it, and when I would apply it again, it would go to the off color again, and just it was really dumb. And the hardest part is the shoulder, the pauldrons that have the uh, numerous uh, studs on them, because... Uh, like, you paint the studs, you paint the uh, pauldron, and there's going to be some, no matter what you do, there's going to be some 
there's going to be some um, mixing. It's just it's just that tiny. Uh, so uh, um, like I would I would base it in black, and then I would uh, bronze up the studs. Heh. And um, and that would uh, get some bronze on the uh, pauldron. So then I would uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to erase the bronze. So what I do is I would get a wash like null oil and uh, wash the pauldrons, but they're curvy, so it doesn't really sit right. So uh, it would only. Oh, I'm gonna die. It would only uh, help a little bit. Um, yeah, I died. Uh, so we'd have these. Uh, um, so anyway, yeah. Uh, that wouldn't work, so I would just uh, very carefully touch up with the regular brush, very lightly, very careful not to touch the spikes, studs, stud spikes, and uh, then what would happen is I would get a little, just a slightly too close to the studs, so then I'm like, okay, I'll just fix the studs with a wash. I'll just apply a very small amount of either uh, seraphim sepia or uh, Agrax Earthshade, because, you know, it's supposed to be bronze metal. Um, and that, for the most part, works. But then I lost contrast, so then I... I don't have the energy. So then I whip out the... Uh, <laughs> the dry brush to just put on some shiny auric gold over the studs, either. and... Uh, the dry brush is not stiff enough, so it would get um, dead already. It would just get a lot of. Uh, it would get a lot of uh, gold on the pauldron, but not whole color, just the metallic bits. So it's just shiny. So, yep, that's about it. So that that's my itinerary. Is get those transfers. Fix my contemptor. Oh, and Dark Souls 3 comes out in like two or three days. So many plants. So that's going to be the next game on here. But uh, that's about it. That's my day. So, uh, uh, what are you doing watching my diary for? <laughs>